So today we are going to be solving quadratic equations by factoring. And here are the three quadratic equations we're going to be solving. All right. Now, first thing I should point out is not all the quadratic equations can be factored. All right. So these three, we're kind of lucky because when we can factor them, they're actually a lot easier to solve. All right. Now, if you need practice factoring quadratics or you need a tutorial on how to do that, check the description down below. I have videos on how to do the easier factoring problems and then also the harder ones where we've got a number in front of x squared. All right. But let's go through and solve these. Now, for this first one, x squared minus 11x plus 28 equals 0. Your first step when solving it quadratic by factoring is to get all your terms on one side of the equal sign and have it equal to 0. Now, this is a little counterintuitive because usually when you solve algebra equations, you want to get x on one side and all the other numbers on the other. But it's a little different with quadratics because we've got an x squared term and an x term there. We actually want to get everything on the same side. And notice, it's already done for you here. Then your next step is to factor this. Now, remember to factor this. We need two numbers that multiply to get positive 28, but they add to get negative 11. In this case, negative 7 and negative 4 work, because negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. Negative 7 plus negative 4 is negative 11. So we can factor this as x minus 7 times x minus 4. And of course, it all still equals 0. Now, how does factoring help us solve the equation? Well, it's kind of huge because remember what this says. This says that all this stuff in parentheses times all this stuff in parentheses equals 0. So in other words, something times something equals 0. Now, you learned in elementary school that when you're multiplying two things and they equal 0, that means at least one of these has to be 0, because 0 times something equals 0. And that's the only way you're going to get 0. So that tells us that either this x minus 7 has to be 0, or this one over here, x minus 4 has to be 0. One of those two has to be 0 in order for this times this to equal 0. So if we can solve these two little equations, we can figure out the possible values of x. All right, so let's start with this one. x minus 7 equals 0. I'm going to add 7 to both sides of the equal sign, and I get x equals 7. Now on this other one, x minus 4 equals 0. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. When I do that, x equals positive 4. These are the two possible values of x that solve that quadratic equation. All right, so we say our solution is x equals 7 or 4. Either one of these will work. And we know that because if we put 7 into here, we get 0 times 3, which is equal to 0. Or if we put 4 into here, we get 0 times negative 3, which also equals 0. All right, so that's how the factoring works to solve the quadratic. Let's do another example. We've got x squared plus 3x equals 10. Remember, our first step is to get all the terms on one side of the equal sign and have it equal to 0. In this case, we're going to do a little work here. We need to subtract off this 10 off the right side so we get 0. Now, when I do that, over here, I can't combine any terms because there's no like terms, so I'll keep them all separated. On the other side, 10 minus 10 is 0. And look, now I've got all the terms on one side of the equal sign and it's equal to 0. OK, so now let's factor this thing. What two numbers multiply to get negative 10 but add to get positive 3? Well, if you think about it, it's got to be positive 5 and negative 2, because those two multiply to get negative 10, but they add up to get positive 3. So here is our factored form of the equation. All right. now. We've got something times something equals 0. So what does that tell us? That means either this is equal to 0 or that's equal to 0. So let's solve them and figure out what x must be. Subtract 5 on both sides. In this case here, x has to be negative 5. Over here, add 2 to both sides. In this case here, 
x has to be 2. So we found our possible solutions for x. x is either negative 5 or 2. All right. Now, let's do a harder one. And this harder one, well, this equation is a little harder because, notice, we've got a coefficient in front of x squared that's not just 1. So it's going to be a little bit harder to factor. All right. So first step, make sure everything equals 0 and all the terms are on one side, and they are. Second step, we've got to factor this. Now, if you don't know how to factor this using the area model technique, check out the video down below because this is a pretty cool technique which allows us to factor this pretty easily. All right, so I take my 6x squared. My x squared terms goes here. My constant term goes here. And then my x term is going to be broken up into two parts. The question is, how do we break this up? Well, I do 6 times 10, which is 60. I need two numbers that multiply to get 60, but add to get 23. All right, so this is going to be tricky. But if you really think about it, 20 and 3 work. Because 20 times 3 is 60, 20 plus 3 is 23. So that tells us I can break my 23x into 20x and 3x. All right. Now this area model helps us factor because now I just have to figure out what times what gets me all these boxes. In this first column, my greatest common factor of 6 and 3 is 3. Greatest common factor of x squared and x is x. So this has to be a 3x on top. 3x times what gets me 6x? 3x times 2x gets me 6x. 3x times what equals 3x? 3x times 1 equals 3x. Now over here, 2x times what gets me 10x? 2x times 10. All right. And does 10 times 1 get me this box? 10 times 1 equals this. Looks good. All right. So now we can factor this because these, no these expressions on the side are the factors. So 3x plus 10 is one factor, and 2x plus 1 is the other. And of course, it all still equals 0. OK? So that's the hardest part of this problem, is getting to this point. All right. Now, let's do the rest of this. We know that either, because this times this equals 0, we know that either 3x plus 10 equals 0, or 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now, to figure out what x must be, we just have to solve these two equations. And notice, these are slightly harder equations. We're going to have to subtract 10 on both sides. We end up getting 3x equals negative 10. And then divide both sides by 3. We get x equals negative 10 thirds. OK, so there's one value. Let's do the other one. Subtract 1 on both sides. I get 2x is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. I end up getting x equals negative 1 half. I just found my two values of x. x has to either be negative 10 thirds or negative 1 half. All right. So this is how you solve quadratics by factoring. Make sure you know how to factor because that's a major step in solving this. All right. But once you get to the factored point, then it's just some basic algebra to get your x value. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.